Welcome back, crime enthusiasts, to another riveting episode of The Real Crime Diary, Daily Dose of Crime. I'm your host, MHB, and today we are diving deep into one of the most haunting cases in recent memory, a chilling story that spans decades and strikes at the very heart of innocence lost. This is the tale of eight-year-old April Tinsley, whose life was tragically cut short in 1988. Her abduction, rape, and murder in Fort Wayne, Indiana not only shocked the community, but left an indelible scar that would take over 30 years to begin healing. April's case is more than a story of senseless violence. It's a relentless pursuit of justice. For years, her killer taunted the community with eerie messages, threatening to strike again, leaving families in constant fear. It's a case that showcases the dogged determination of law enforcement, the power of new forensic technologies, and a community's unwavering hope for answers. In today's episode, we'll unravel this gripping saga, starting from that fateful day in 1988 through to the breakthrough that finally brought a sense of closure. Along the way, we'll hear from those who lived under the shadow of this crime and the incredible efforts that led to the arrest of John D. Miller, a man who lived among them for years, cloaked in anonymity. So fasten your seatbelts, because this case is not just a journey into the depths of human depravity, but also a testament to resilience and the long arm of justice. Stay with us as we peel back the layers of this dark mystery, right here on The Real Crime Diary, Daily Dose of Crime. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that notification bell so you're always in the loop. And for even more true crime content, head over to therealcrimediary.com, your go-to source for exclusive stories and behind-the-scenes content. That QR code you see? It's your fast track to the latest content from The Real Crime Diary. Scan it with your phone and you'll get instant access to our newest videos, articles, and more. April Marie Tinsley was an energetic and loving eight-year-old girl from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Tragically, her young life was cut short in a heinous crime that left a scar on the community. On Good Friday, April 1st, 1988, April was playing with friends near her home when she suddenly disappeared, leaving behind an air of mystery and fear. The initial investigation efforts were intensive. Police officers and volunteers scoured the area for any sign of April. Tragically, three days later on April 4th, her lifeless body was discovered in a ditch about 20 miles away. The autopsy revealed a chilling truth. April had been sexually assaulted and then strangled. Her family and the entire community were left in shock, grappling with the brutal nature of the crime. The investigation moved swiftly in its early days, driven by the urgency and horror surrounding April's murder. Witnesses reported seeing a suspicious blue pickup truck in the area and police released a composite sketch of a potential suspect. Despite these efforts, no immediate breakthroughs emerged. The search for April's killer grew increasingly frustrating as leads turned cold, but the detectives and community refused to give up hope. As time passed without an arrest, the tragic story of April Tinsley became a haunting symbol of lost innocence and unrelenting fear. Little did anyone know this case would span decades before seeing any semblance of closure, leaving an indelible mark on Fort Wayne and its residents. For years following April Tinsley's abduction and tragic death, the Fort Wayne community lived in a state of perpetual unease, haunted by the knowledge that her killer roamed free. The fear only deepened when two years after April's murder, a chilling message was discovered scrawled on a barn near the site where her body had been found. The note read, I kill eight-year-old April Marie Tinsley, I will kill again. This set the stage for a reign of terror that would linger for decades. The killer's twisted sense of satisfaction didn't stop there. In 2004, a Memorial Day weekend outing was turned into a scene of horror for Crystal Higgs and her daughter, Emily. Emily discovered a plastic bag in the basket of her bike containing a note, a used condom, and a warning that she would be the next victim. Investigations revealed three other similar incidents, each involving young girls who found mysterious, eerie notes implicating the very same person who had taken April's life. These messages, handwritten in a childlike scrawl, promised further violence, filling the recipients with terror and the community with dread. The grotesque repetitions of these crimes had a profound effect on the people of Fort Wayne and surrounding areas. Conversations around town painted a picture of a community under siege, their daily lives overshadowed by the omnipresence of this unseen predator. Parents became hypervigilant, supervision at play areas increased, and the freedom of children to roam their neighborhoods vanished, a tragic consequence of a community gripped by fear. As the community's anxiety grew, 
So did the determination of local and state authorities to bring April's killer to justice. Initial efforts, however, were met with frustration and dead ends. Hundreds of tips were followed, and suspect profiles were generated. The deposition of a community witness even led to the creation of a composite sketch of the suspect, spurring countless leads that ultimately proved fruitless. In a bid to cast a wider net, the case was covered by America's Most Wanted and Crime Bulletin boards, but the real breakthrough remained elusive. In 1990, the tension peaked again when more disturbing messages appeared, this time on a barn door, not far from where April's body was found. This suggested that the killer was not only at large, but also enjoying a perverse game of cat and mouse with the entire community. Local authorities formed multiple task forces, bringing together resources from the Fort Wayne Police Department, the FBI, and later specialized units like the Child Abduction Rapid Deployment CARD team. Despite their concerted efforts and the sophisticated attempts to profile and locate the killer, results were maddeningly inconclusive. It wasn't until nearly two decades later, in 2004, that the killer resurfaced with those sinister notes on bicycles and in mailboxes. DNA from these notes matched the samples collected from April's case, affirming that the same monster who taunted the community for years was indeed responsible for the heinous crime. However, despite this critical evidence, a name and a face remained frustratingly just out of reach. The Fort Wayne community was left grappling not only with the unsolved murder, but also with the visceral fear that came from knowing the killer was still out there. Every effort to identify him was met with roadblocks, prolonging the agony of a community that sought justice for a little girl whose life was brutally cut short. The hunt for answers had become a grueling pursuit, one that tested the limits of investigative tenacity and community resilience. Imagine being held in suspense for 30 long years, wondering if the perpetrator of a heinous crime would ever be brought to justice. Such was the harrowing reality for the Fort Wayne community following April Tinsley's tragic murder. Years turned into decades with no resolution in sight until an incredible breakthrough in DNA technology and forensic genealogy changed everything. Fast forward to May 2018, where the pathway to solving April Tinsley's murder took a revolutionary turn. Following in the footsteps of the Golden State Killer case, Fort Wayne police detective Brian Martin decided to employ genetic genealogy. He contacted Parabon Nanolabs, a cutting-edge forensics company based in Virginia, known for its expertise in using DNA technology to solve cold cases. Parabon Nanolabs leverage the power of genealogical databases where individuals upload their DNA profiles, often to trace their ancestry. By inputting the DNA from the crime scene and the killer's taunts into such a database, the team hoped to find a match that would lead them to April's murderer. The result? A narrowing down from countless possibilities to two primary suspects, John D. Miller and his brother. To guarantee the match, detectives turned to a more direct approach. They collected used condoms from Miller's trash, meticulously securing the DNA samples. The forensic results were conclusive. The DNA from Miller's discarded condoms was an exact match to the DNA collected from April Tinsley's crime scene and the chilling messages left by her killer. The moment of confrontation was intense yet conclusive. Investigators approached John D. Miller at his residence in Grable, Indiana. When they questioned him about why he thought they were there, Miller uttered the name that had haunted the community and authorities for three decades, April Tinsley. In that pivotal interview, Miller confessed to the unthinkable. He admitted to abducting April, raping her, and ultimately choking her to death in sheer panic of getting caught. His confession expanded further into even more disturbing details involving post-mortem actions and the disposal of her body. The weight of his words was staggering, laying bare the monstrous acts that had long been a dark shadow over Fort Wayne. Through the miracle of modern DNA technology and relentless persistence, investigators finally cemented Miller's guilt and brought him to justice. Not only did this arrest signify a monumental achievement in forensic advancements, but it also symbolized a beacon of hope for the many cold cases still awaiting resolution. The path to justice for April Tinsley, illuminated by science, had finally reached its destined end. While you're watching, keep an eye out for the QR code on your screen. It's your all-access pass to everything we've got going on at The Real Crime Diary. From exclusive videos to in-depth reports, just a quick scan will get you there. Go ahead, try it out and see where it takes you. For the Fort Wayne community, the years following April Tinsley's murder were marked by an undercurrent of fear and anxiety that was ever-present. 
The very mention of her name brought back harrowing memories of an innocent child's brutal murder, a crime that remained unsolved for decades. Each unsolved year was a painful reminder of the predator lurking undetected among them, a shadow that loomed large over their daily lives. The killer's taunting messages only escalated the terror. In 1990, the brazen scrawl on a barn, I kill eight-year-old April Marie Tinsley, did you find the other shoe, haha, -ha, I will kill again, shook the community to its core. Then, in 2004, the series of disturbing notes left with used condoms and Polaroids made every parent in Fort Wayne hyper-aware of their children's every move. Mothers like Crystal Higgs were horrified when her daughter Emily found one such note in her bicycle basket which read, Hi honey, I've been watching you. You are my next victim. If I don't see this in the paper tomorrow or on the local news, I will blow up your house. These messages drove home the chilling realization. April's killer was still out there, boldly flaunting his crimes and threatening to strike again. For years, residents lived under a cloud of suspense and unease. Emily Humphreys, now an adult, still grapples with the emotional scars from that day. She avoids stepping outside after dark, a lingering effect of her childhood fears. Her story is one among many, where April's murder left a lasting impact on the hearts and minds of Fort Wayne's residents. They carried a collective grief and frustration, unable to find solace without justice being served. The break in the case, thanks to advances in DNA technology, was a seismic shift for the community. For the first time in three decades, hope began to replace despair. The arrest of John D. Miller brought a bittersweet mix of relief and anguish. There he was, the man who had tormented the community from the shadows, finally facing justice for his monstrous acts. For former Mayor Paul Helmke and law enforcement officers like Dan Camp, who had invested years of emotional and professional effort into the case, the arrest was a moment of profound triumph. Though they carried the personal burden of unsolved terror for years, this breakthrough affirmed their persistence. Mayor Tom Henry echoed this sentiment, recognizing the arrest as a monumental step toward healing, a release from an anxiety that had gripped Fort Wayne for so long. Families of unsolved cases often face the added torment of fearing the unknown. Janet Tinsley, April's mother, spoke of this void, the dark chasm of not knowing if justice would ever come. When Miller was finally apprehended, it was a closure that felt like a long overdue balm to a deep wound. For Janet, the news that her daughter's killer had been caught was a mix of disbelief and relief, a conclusion she had yearned for over three grueling decades. In the aftermath, Fort Wayne began to heal, not forgetting but moving forward with a renewed sense of security. Community members gathered at April's Garden, a poignant memorial dedicated to remembering April. Balloon launches, candlelight vigils, and memorial walks became symbolic gestures of resilience and remembrance. The families, neighbors, and law enforcement officers who had stood vigilant through the years were now united in a shared hope and a collective sigh of relief. The ghost that once haunted Fort Wayne had been exorcised not only by law but by the community's unwavering resolve. April Tinsley's case stands as a testament to the enduring spirit of a town that refused to give up, proving that even after the longest night, dawn inevitably breaks. Once John D. Miller was arrested, the wheels of justice began to turn swiftly. On July 15, 2018, Miller was apprehended and brought in for questioning. The tension in the air was palpable. This was a moment the Fort Wayne community had been waiting for over three decades. There, in the cold, stark interview room, Miller confessed to the heinous crime, admitting he had kidnapped, raped, and murdered April Tinsley. The legal proceedings moved with remarkable speed. Just four days after his arrest, Miller faced a judge in Allen County Court where he was charged with murder, child molesting, and criminal confinement of a victim under 14. He pleaded not guilty, setting the stage for a legal battle that many anticipated would be drawn out and grueling. However, this was not to be the case, as evidence mounted against him, including the chilling DNA matches and his own damning confession, Miller realized the inevitability of his fate. On December 7, 2018, standing before a courtroom filled with April's family, friends, and members of the community, Miller changed his plea to guilty. His voice was faint but resolute as he admitted to raping and strangling April with his bare hands. Tears welled in the eyes of those who had been haunted by this case for years as a collective sigh of relief echoed throughout the room. Miller's sentencing came swiftly. He was handed an 80-year prison sentence, 50 years for murder and 30 years for child molestation. For April's family, this moment was both heartbreaking and heartening. 
The justice they had sought for so long was finally being served. Janet Tinsley, April's mother, expressed a mix of sorrow and relief. I can't believe it's finally here, she said, encapsulating the emotions of a community profoundly affected by this tragedy. The Fort Wayne mayor, Tom Henry, echoed this sentiment, emphasizing that Miller's conviction restored a measure of peace and safety that had been missing for years. The legal proceedings concluded with Miller being placed in the Indiana Department of Correction Reception Diagnostic Center in Plainfield, before being moved to the Newcastle Correctional Facility. His earliest possible release date is set for 2058, when he would be 99 years old, effectively ensuring he will spend the remainder of his life behind bars. For Fort Wayne, the resolution of this case marked a significant moment in their collective history. The shadows that had loomed over the community for decades began to lift, offering a renewed sense of hope and security. This was not just a victory for April's family, but for every resident who had lived in fear, every investigator who had tirelessly pursued justice, and every person who had kept April's memory alive through the years. In the end, while the scars of April Tinsley's tragedy will never fully heal, the conviction of John D. Miller provided a long-awaited closure, a testament to the relentless pursuit of justice, and a solemn reminder of the strength and resilience of a community united against evil. As the decades have passed since that tragic April day in 1988, April Tinsley's memory has continued to resonate deeply within the Fort Wayne community. Her story is one of heartbreak, but also one of resilience and determination. In her honor, April's Garden was created, a serene and poignant memorial where the community can gather not only to remember her, but also to reflect on the vulnerabilities and the need to protect our children. This memorial serves as a sanctuary for healing and as a reminder of the collective strength in pursuing justice for those who cannot speak for themselves. April's case has also imparted crucial lessons in crime investigation and community vigilance. The combined efforts of local law enforcement, federal agencies, and advancements in forensic technology illustrate the importance of perseverance. The use of forensic genealogy to identify and capture John Miller not only brought closure to April's family, but also set a precedent in the use of emerging technologies to crack long unsolved cases. The Fort Wayne community, once shadowed by fear and uncertainty, has emerged with a fortified commitment to ensuring such a tragedy does not happen again. April's legacy lives on through advocacy for better child protection measures and unwavering support for families enduring similar traumas. Her story reminds us that while time may pass, the pursuit of justice never truly fades. We've journeyed together through the haunting story of April Tinsley, from the heart-wrenching day she disappeared to the decades of uncertainty that followed. Her case reminds us of the shadows that lurk, the fears that persist, and the undying hope that justice will eventually prevail. For over three decades, the Fort Wayne community lived in a state of trepidation, haunted by the unknown. Yet they never gave up. Because of their persistence and the relentless pursuit of truth by law enforcement, a monstrous predator was finally unmasked and justice was served. The arrest and conviction of John D. Miller brought a measure of peace, a hard-fought victory against the darkness that had enveloped April's memory for so long. April's legacy is not just one of tragedy, but also of resilience and communal strength. The memorials established in her honor stand as enduring symbols of love and a stark reminder of the innocence we lose to such heinous acts. They are also beacons of hope reflecting the advancements in forensic science that now offer renewed confidence in solving even the most daunting cases. Today, let's remember April Tinsley not only for the tragedy that befell her, but for the way her story spurred a community to action. Her life will forever inspire those who stand against such evil, driving them to ensure no family endures this pain in silence. Thank you for joining us on The Real Crime Diary Daily Dose of Crime. We dedicate each episode to shedding light on true crime stories, providing a voice to the voiceless, and helping to uncover the truth. Together, we honor the victims by continuing to seek justice fervently and fearlessly. Until next time, stay vigilant, stay informed, and join us as we dive deeper into the shadows of real crime, always bringing the truth to light.